Hi, you are welcome to my school channel and my name is Abiola. Right here we are going to understand and study the topic calculus, right? We are going to look at the various branches of calculus. So at first we are going to kick off with differentiation, you know, the differential calculus, that's what we refer to as differentiation. We are going to look at several kinds of methods, you know, that are required or used in uh, differentiation. As well, we are going to look at uh, different kinds of functions, right, that are attached with uh, differentiation, especially using either the direct, uh, the direct method or you are using the first principle method. So, that direct method, you know, we are going to talk about uh, logarithmic functions, you know, algebraic functions and the like. So, this is a video content that you don't want to miss. So, do not go anywhere. Stay with us and we will be right back. Welcome back to your favorite learning channel, the My School YouTube. So right here we have before us the topic calculus. So let's use the slides available. So we have calculus, you know, we have differential and integral uh, calculus. So calculus is the study of rates of change, right? So you are actually studying um, how change occurs, right? And at what rate, uh, okay, is this change? Okay, happening. So we have uh, in a linear function, this is just an instance, the slope m expresses the rate of change of the function. So take an example, assume the following linear function, you can see this is your slope, right? And this is your intercept. So you will notice that if the value of x, let's say x is actually, let me say 3, and you've gotten your slope to be positive, let's say 2. So 2 times 3, that gives us what? 6 plus 20, that is 26. So we can see positive slope increase in x causes an increase in y. So we can see that rate of change between an independent variable and a dependent variable, right? So let's look at this. If the slope is negative, let's say minus 2 now. So minus 2 times 3, that gives us minus 6. Minus 6 plus 20, that is plus 14. So we can see that there's a decrease in y, okay, as there's an increase in x. So this is uh, just one introductory aspect regarding calculus. Let's move ahead to the next slide. So, what is calculus, right? Calculus is the study of change, as I mentioned earlier. It has two main branches, okay? So, uh, basically, you want to see the relationship, you know, the rate of change between um, a function, right, with respect to its variables. So, uh, calculus is the study of change, and it has two main branches. We have, at first, the differential calculus, and this is what we can also refer to as differentiation, the process of finding the right derivatives to put. So, we have differential calculus, that is the study of change, then we have integral calculus, which you can refer to as integration. All right, so that is the study of area or accumulation. So look at this. Say, but they both start with a foundation in precalculus. So precalculus like um, your algebra, your geometry, and your trigonometry. And of course, limits. We are going to talk about limits as we proceed in this video. So, this is just another diagrammatic expression. So, calculus is divided into two categories. You know, your differential calculus or your differentiation, where we have rate of change, then we have your integral calculus, where we have accumulation. So, we can see the fundamental theorem of calculus. You know, this is where we connect differential calculus and integral calculus. Let's move right to the next slide. So, you can see this calculus, two main branches, the differential calculus and integral calculus. This repetition is actually to help us understand or cement these concepts into our minds properly. So we'll move ahead to the next slide. Good. So how did we come about differentiation? You know, uh, why was differentiation developed originally? So Isaac Newton, in Isaac Newton's day, you know, the shipwrecks occurred so often right and these are due to some factors let's read out so we have occurred regularly because the ship was not where the captain thought it was using only the stars for guidance you know they had to read the stars you know just to say okay this is how the wind direction is going to look like this is just to predict things i know those things were not really uh, as reliable as expected so calculus was developed to improve navigation techniques 
So not just um, Isaac Newton, there was also another person that assisted him in this whole um, concept. So this is a real life application or the reason why differentiation was introduced. Of course, it's useful when it comes to astronomy, you know, engineering and the likes. We'll move ahead to the next slide. So what is differentiation? So like I mentioned earlier, differentiation is actually the process of finding derivatives. Okay, so differentiation is the process of deriving, this is derivative of x, right, from the function x, right? So we'll look at this process in a second. Now, this is called, the, this is f prime of x, is called the derived function or the derivative of f, f of x. Now, okay, imagine this, if you are asked, what is the derivative of corn? You can say conflicts, right, or popcorn. So we can say that derivative of that conflicts or popcorn is the derivative of corn. We see that, right? So the derived function represents what? The rate of change of the function, right? Or we can also put it as the gradient of the tangent to the graph of the function. This, of course, can be well painted out when we are using a graphical illustration. So let's move right to the next slide. So we have, uh, you know, under differentiation, you know, we can use the direct method or we can use uh, the first principle. So under the direct method, you know, we have uh, the log logarithmic uh, uh, functions, right? We have the algebraic functions, uh, we have the trigonometric functions, which we have here, right? And we have the exponential function. So for uh, the trigonometric function, you know, when you differentiate them, like for instance, when you differentiate sine x, you will get cos x. When you differentiate cos x, you get minus sine x. So these are some of the trigonometric functions that we are going to need, right? That we need in as we go ahead in solving some examples to further understand the concept. Let's look at the inverse side of these trigonometric functions. So derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions. So we can see this. So the sine inverse of x will actually give you this, provided that x is not equal to plus or minus one. So these are some of the things that we we'll need to capture or refer back to as we move ahead in this video lesson. We we'll go on to this next slide. So how would you define a function, right? So look at this. Y is a function of x. So this is a dependent variable because whatever value this particular um, letter carries, right? That is what we determine what this is going to be. So this uh, represents your input and this is where your output will be reflected. So this is your dependent variable. This is your independent variable because Y depends on X. So when, uh, depending on the function that we are working around with, you know, when X is two, right? That will determine what Y will become. Right? So if, if the function we have, the relationship we have is actually f of x is equals to x squared. So when x is 2, that is 2 raised to the power 2. That means y becomes 4. When x is now 3, right, y becomes 9. So you can see um, the value of y depends on the value of x. So dependent variable, independent variable. We'll go on to the next slide. So derivative of a function. So you can see this. The process of finding the derivative of a function is called what? Differentiation. And now I've said this at least a couple of times from now so that we can just grasp this. Okay. So, and the branch of calculus that deals with the process is referred to as what? Differential calculus. Just a quick summary. So differentiation is an important mathematical tool in physics. No, not just in mathematics. You know, it's important in physics, in mechanics, in uh, economics, and many other disciplines that involve change and motion. You know, anything that um, changes. Right. So let's move on to the next slide. So of course, you know, we've talked about um, uh, derivatives. And we've mentioned variables, you know, and uh, we, we looked at dependent variable and independent variable, just like the word independent, you know, they can stand on their own. Why dependent? What becomes of them is dependent on or it relies on this, right? So let's look at this. So it is placed on the vertical axis, you know, when you are constructing your graph, your Cartesian graph to take. Okay, so a dependent variable is a variable that is dependent on the value of another variable. You can see that earlier. So independent variable is placed on the horizontal axis. So like this, right? So your dependent, your independent variable. So the independent variable causes an apparent change in or it affects the dependent variable. Okay, we'll move on to the next slide. So how would you define a limit? These are just basic terminologies that we should get acquainted with when we are working around differentiation or calculus in general. So how do we define limits? 
right? So look at this. Let f be the function, be a function defined on some open interval that contains the number a, except possibly at a itself. Now I'm going to explain this. Then we say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is l, right? And we write it this way. This is a notation for it. So we can see. So for every for every member, right, that is greater than zero, right, is not zero, there is a number, right, infinity, such that you have this relationship. So with this before us now, how would you define limits? Limits can be simply defined as the approximate value of a function at a defined value of x. This is what I mean. So look at this. So we are looking at the approximate value of this function, right, at a defined value of x. So we can see here x approaches a. So the approximate value of this, right, as s comes here. So that is how we can describe or define limit briefly. And it can be right-sided or left-sided. Of course, we are going to understand this concept better as we move further in the video. Let's go ahead with the next slide. Limit laws. Okay, so I, I believe we understand this uh, notation. It's these notations that we have right here. So these um, laws or rules, what they are telling us, they are very, very easy. All right, so look at this. Now, the sum, right, of the limits of these functions, right, is equal to the sum of their respective functions. So if the function you have gotten here is 2, if what you have gotten here is 3, so 2 plus 3 will still give us 5. That is what we have here. The same thing occurs here, right? The difference of limits of these two functions, right, is still equal to this, the difference of their respective functions, right? So that means as you are bringing them together, you are going to get a, a specific value. Even when you now sort them out, one after the other, and you still match them, you still, still get the same value. Just like what we have here, the limit of a constant is still a constant. So we can see that. So this is what uh, the limit laws are referring to. We move ahead to the next slide. So look at some basic derivative rules. Or you can, some, some can call it uh, different uh, methods of uh, differentiation, right? Or differentiation rules. But we just have it right here. So we have the constant rule. We have the constant multiple rule. We have the power rule. We have the sum rule, right? We have the difference, uh, the difference rule, right? We have the product rule. We have the quotient rule. We have the chain rule. These rules are very easy to understand and apply. I just need you to stick with me throughout this video lesson because we are going to um, use examples and some kind of references that are very easy to understand and practice. So right here, we've come to the end of this video lesson, but there are definitely wonderful things to assess as you subscribe for the full video lesson. So how do you assess this full video content? All you need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. Right there, you meet the catalog where you can subscribe and have access, full access, unrestricted. So, and do not forget that you also have to hit the like button for us. Click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alerts immediately. We upload the next video content just for you.